All right, people, it is time for a new segment, which I am calling Great Bands That Nobody Liked. And it's a little bit of an exaggeration because the bands that I'm going to talk about here, it's not that nobody liked them. It's more like not enough people liked them or more people should have liked them. So what we're going to do is talk about some bands that I thought should have been bigger because they were great and amazing. But for whatever reason, either they screwed up their career or, you know, people just weren't into it. But either way, some great bands that weren't as popular as I thought they should have been or might have been. So let's check it out because there was a long, long list of these. The halls of scene history are lined with volume after volume of great bands that didn't reach their full potential. And that's what we're gonna talk about. And also I'd like to thank Factor for sponsoring this video. If you're busy with summer plans, but you still wanna eat well, and you should, then check out Factor. They make nutritious chef prepared meals delivered straight to your door that are ready in just two minutes. That means you can skip the trips to the grocery store and the chopping and the prep and the cleanup and this and that while still getting the flavor and nutrition that you need. If you eat out a lot, it's a great way to save money. It's cheaper than takeout and it's way, way cheaper than delivery, which if you ask me is a complete ripoff. And they have a ton of options. There's over 34 different meals. Personally, I like the calorie smart ones, which are under 550 calories per serving. They also have new lunch to go meals that are ready to eat with no microwave required and their fancy new surf and turf options. Personally, I love that I don't have to think about what I'm gonna eat for lunch. I just go downstairs, pick something out of the fridge, and I know that it's gonna taste good and that I'm gonna hit my macro goals. So if you wanna check out Factor, and honestly, I think you should, head to factor75.com or click the link in the description of this video and use the code FIN50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Number one on that list is a band that I have talked about before, but you know what? I'm going to talk about them again and again and again and again, God damn it! which is Forever the Sickest Kids. They came out way back in 2008 on Universal, the peak of neon pop punk. They were definitely supposed to be the next big thing. Can you believe this is 15 years old? How horrifying is that, that this is 15 years ago? Absolutely awful that this is 15 years old. They were definitely supposed to be the next big thing supposed to be like you know the next all-time low or something i think they were incredible yeah i listen to this album all the time too it's great yeah their first two out you know their their self-titled album was good too god i love this album look at the fits in this yeah this song is incredible you know, to me, the coolest thing about this band is how progressive they were. They had just so many layers of like harmonies and synths and electronic drums and acoustic drums. And they had like dance parts and just, you know, that have sometimes like four part vocal harmonies and stuff, which is pretty crazy for a band like this. And I think they were only like 21 or something like that. And also, of course, we got to talk about their aesthetics, just the absolute peak of neon pop punk. Let's see if I can find one of their old promo pictures. Here it is. Look at this. <laughs> Does not get any more 2008 than this. <laughs> Kyle's hair, Jonathan's uh, Hollister hoodie, all the flat ironed hair, the American apparel hoodies, peak 2008. And the album is just really incredible. I don't know why. Well, I kind of know why they didn't get any bigger. Um, not because their music wasn't great, but uh, I think they just kind of didn't really have, you know, with all due respect to their singer, I think they just didn't have like the front man that they needed. You know, in this genre, you got to have an Alex Gaskarth or something like that. You know, you, you got to have, you know, a Trace Cyrus. They didn't have the star power. Exactly. Jonathan Cook, I think, was a OK front man, but I don't think he was a strong enough front man. You got to have a beautiful, charismatic front man that all the seventh graders um, will fall in love with, which, which was kind of weird, right? <laughs> a little bit weird that, um, seventh graders were the target audience for this stuff, but that's just, that's just how it was at that time. You know, <laughs> we didn't ask those questions. We didn't go, Hey, why are there, um, 200 seventh graders here throwing their a cup bras on the stage and you're 24 years old. It's a little bit odd. Why are we doing this? We didn't ask those questions back then, but in any case, definitely go check out their first album, Underdog Alma Mater. 
is a 10 out of 10 classic in my book. Absolutely love it. I think their other albums are good too, but this one is definitely the best. This is the one to check out. Absolute masterpiece, still holds up. They might still play shows here and there. Like, I, I'm not sure what the status is. I don't think they're a band, but they might be. Either way, Forgotten Legends of the 2000s. Shout out to Forever the Sickest Kids. How about the one and only Job for a Cowboy? Everybody remembers them, right? Uh, from way back in 2005. Remember this from 2005? This shit's good. That little ice bell. I would say that, uh, yeah, single-handedly put pig squeals on the map and made them so immensely popular they immediately went out of style. It's true. I mean, I think Job for a Cowboy is the band that made Deathcore kind of blow up because this is from 2005 suicide silence was around then but job for a cowboy i think is the band that really blew up on myspace and made everybody be like oh what's this deathcore shit this is pretty cool and also i think they were like what 17 or 18 when they did this right they were really really young really young they could play really well like this shit is good i think it's awesome and amazing still holds up like the older it gets the better it sounds to me because like this is everything that modern deathcore isn't they can play but it's not like over processed it's still like nasty and raw super catchy all the scene kids liked it like the scene kids moshing outside of a school you remember this classic video <laughs> You know, and I think that's a lot of the reason why people hated Job for a Cowboy is because these were their fans, like scene kids, which, you know, like there's nothing wrong with that. It's cool. Like what is wrong with the fact that these kids look like they're what, 13 or 14 or something? It's like, is there something wrong with the fact that these kids like the band? That's how kind of people thought about it. And there was this one also. You guys remember this? The pig squeal girl. Well, I'm Brittany, and um, my last pig squealing video sucked. From 2008. So I'm going to be doing a redo, okay? Three million views. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Bye. What a 2008 name too, Brit Face Yo. So I think that's part of the reason why people hate a job for a cowboy, but actually they were great. And there's nothing wrong with the fact that scene kids like them. I think what happened with job for a cowboy is that they changed their style a couple years later to just be kind of like death metal, I guess. And I mean, they were good at it, but then they turned into this, which isn't bad, but it's like, you know, and I don't know if they changed their style because they wanted credibility or if, you know, they just legitimately didn't like playing Deathcore. I don't know. Um, either way, you know, they really kind of, you know, I don't want to say like destroyed their careers, but they really, you know, they could have been a Whitechapel, a Suicide Silence. You know, they should have been much bigger. I feel for Job for a Cowboy, they just made what they wanted to make and the whole scene of fan base just bailed on them because it's boring. You know, unfortunately, yeah, Deathcore allows you to do your own thing. Death metal means you play by the numbers. Unfortunately, I think most people thought this stuff was just boring, which I, I agree. So they should bring it back, people. That's the future. Bring it back, Job for a Cowboy. Bring back Deathcore. It's what the people want. Okay, next up, another band that should have been bigger. Do you guys remember Something Corporate? Do you guys remember this uh, very sweet G-rated pop punk from back in the day? Yes, Andrew McMahon. Oh, look at the, the aesthetics. This chorus is so good, though. Legitimately so good. They look like a Disney Channel band. They were very teen movie soundtrack. Exactly. Very G-rated. Not even the 100th most popular band in their genre. Exactly. It's very... It's very weird. I think the reason why is because they were just like too squeaky clean, too G rated. Even though these songs are great, there's just like zero edge to this at all, right? Like no edge whatsoever. And unfortunately, I think it's kind of a bummer that 
that's kind of the world we live in that people need music to be edgy to like it but uh you know that's just how it is my personal favorite song by them um <laughs> is uh, this song drunk girl um this is great this is a song about how he let a drunk girl take advantage of him and he regrets it it's great i kissed a drunk girl this song is hilarious. He's very disappointed in himself for what he's done. I kissed a drunk girl. I kissed a drunk girl. Yes, I did. I let, I let my, my guard, guard down. down. Oh. I feel like he's praying. He's like, dear Lord, I just, I want you to know I had a moment of weakness. I let the flesh overtake me. I, I knew you didn't want me to do this, dear Lord, but... I was weak to the flesh, and I just, I just, dear Lord, please let me have a second chance. I promise, I promise I'll never do it again. It just, I promise, I, I feel like I let you down, and I just, I'm just asking you, begging you to forgive me. I can't believe I kissed her. Your eyes were open, I know I am not the one. I know I'm not the one. She was just using me. She just wanted a warm body. She just wanted to use me. For attention and sex she doesn't love me why don't i let her kiss me i could have been anyone else she didn't care about me she used me she plied me with alcohol and then she used me i could have been anybody at that party why did I let her take advantage of me like that? Uh, I wonder what he thinks of this now. Just like, Andrew, you know, maybe don't put the song out about how you feel used by the girl who kissed you at the party. Yeah, she was trying to steal my seed. Maybe don't put that one out. Anyway, I think the band like legitimately is great. Super talented guy. I think both Something Corporate and Jack's Mannequin are awesome. I really like both of them. Just unfortunately, not edgy enough for the kids. That's the reality of it. But I will tell you what is edgy. Another band, which I absolutely love. Motion City Soundtrack. And uh, I gotta say, if uh, something corporate is like, you know, shiny, happy pop punk, you're like, oh, this is a pretty cool song. But then you listen a little bit closer and you're like, I don't know, this might be a little bit too G-rated for me. Motion City Soundtrack is the opposite of that. This is uh, LGFUAD by Motion City Soundtrack, which stands for Let's Get Fucked Up and Die. Motion City Soundtrack is sort of the opposite in that it sounds like cheery, upbeat, kind of bouncy pop punk, but the lyrics are like crushingly, horrifyingly dark, where you're like, holy shit, I don't know if I can listen to this because it makes me want to fucking die. Let's get fucked up and die. I'm speaking figuratively, of course. Yes, so I'm already dead. Very, 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 very fucking dark songs. But I can still pretend. The lyrics are so brutal. I mean, that's like their vibe right here. It's like smoking in some half empty apartment with your girlfriend who has already broken up with you, but like you have another three months left on your lease, so you can't actually move out. So you're just like stuck in this horrible, depressing, toxic kind of moment. That's the vibe of Motion City soundtrack. Their song that is the most crushing to me is uh, Broken Heart. This song is just crushing. Like I legitimately can't really listen to it because it's so fucking sad these aren't like emo lyrics like these lyrics are more depressing than the acacia stream so much to say but no words to convey the loneliness building with each passing day but i'm getting used to it you have to get used to it the whole song is basically him saying that like his heart is broken the whole time you think oh he's getting over it it's gonna be better but then here's the end of the song the last line is you never get used to it you just have to live with it and you're just like oh it's just brutally fucking depressing um their songs are super catchy very like poppy sort of like kind of like alkaline trio or something like that but maybe even darker than alkaline trio and I, I think that's the issue with motion city soundtrack there's some of these bands where you're like oh it's dark but it's like 
kind of like hopeful or upbeat or it's so sweet or romantic, but Motion City soundtrack just actually makes you think about unaliving yourself. You're like, oof. <laughs> it's very dark, brutal stuff. I think the band is amazing though. Like some of the best lyrics, I, I could like go on and on about their lyrics. Like some of the absolute best lyrics um, in the game. So check them out if you like that kind of sound. I'm a huge fan. How about one of my favorite examples of weird scene trivia. This band and this song, Party in Your Bedroom by Cash Cash. Uh, speaking of neon, I misspoke. I said that Forever the Sickest Kids were the most neon band of all time. That was wrong. The most neon band of all time is Cash Cash. No question. This is the pinnacle of neon. The most neon thing ever created. This is a forgotten artifact of scene lore during the 2007 to 2009 um, neon pop punk boom. This was the most neon band of all. Look at this shit. Oh God. The neon, the animal prints, everyone wanted the next um, Metro station, I guess. It's so catchy. Very Disney Channel, right? So fucking corporate. High school and musical vibes. Listen to this chorus. I just feel like this is a little bit inappropriate because my son was horrified. He's 14 years old. He bought this and he thought this was an innocent song about simply having a party in one's bedroom. He thought, oh, this song is about having my friends over to play Fortnite and Roblox, right? And I had to tell him that no, this song is a thinly veiled reference to premarital sex. Needless to say, my son was horrified. He immediately threw the CD outside the window of my Lexus SUV and said, Daddy, I'm so glad that you warned me about this before I could listen any further. This CD was trying to drag me into the pits of hell, but thankfully you saved me. Now let's go for a long drive and wash the stench of sin off of me. I feel like it should have been labeled with an explicit content sticker, knowing that this song is a thinly veiled reference to premarital sex, which is not something that has a place in this home. Okay, mister. What's funny about Cash Cash is they became these like big time EDM DJs a couple years later. This is what Cash Cash does now. I guess it's three of them. It's two brothers. And uh, they're doing that now. The big time EDM DJ thing. I just want to know how many of their fans now are aware of old school Cash Cash. You know, they go see them at fucking, you know, Tomorrowland or something like that. And they're like, hey, uh, do you still play Party in Your Bedroom? I want to know how often that comes up. <laughs> it's kind of interesting because Cash Cash as a scene band totally failed. I saw them in like 2009 or something like that. And there were like 40 people there and they were all in like sixth grade. They totally failed as a scene band, but then they rebooted themselves as uh, EDM. And uh, yeah, what a time to be alive. Shout out to them for pulling it off. Quite a transition. Nicely done, boys. All right, that does it for this installment of great bands that nobody liked. Come back next time for another walk down the halls of scene history where we look at more bands that should have been more popular, but for whatever reason, just couldn't make it happen. Join us for volume two. <laughs> Can't believe I kissed her.